Hello, welcome to the Modern Musclehead Podcast. This is Scott Tuzanov, MetabolicMasterpiece.com, along with Brian Cron, BrianCron.com, Paul Teal of VisceralShift.com. Today, we're going to be talking about listening to your body in regards to training, <laughs> lifestyle. Should be a fun, uh, fun discussion here. Something that I think takes time. I think it's something that you really have to evolve up to the point with sometimes it, it, it's really tough in the beginning when you're getting into all this stuff to listen to your body it's it's almost best to just have a structured plan just go at it and focus on progressions through numbers and stuff like that but as you learn more about um as, as you get more comfortable with all that it becomes a little bit easier to to listen to your body while you're training and during nutrition and you guys want to open up with any kind of insights you want to start with training you want to start with nutrition lifestyle in general um there's so much it's a it's a pretty big topic but uh i'll try to keep this short sweet and to the point uh yeah i i, I don't think most people should listen to their body <laughs> when, they're, <laughs> when they're dieting <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, but in, in the sense of hunger yeah yeah, yeah. Ma managing hunger yeah. uh i know that, that's an interesting that's yeah. an interesting point because uh, yeah, you're you're feeling the hunger and yeah. you want to you want to feed into that hunger, but then it does it helps to pay attention to are are you really hungry? Yeah. Or just um, bored? Yeah. Bored? Yeah, bored. What, what's going on with your day? Are are you dehydrated? Uh, did you have a shitty night's sleep last night? Are you bored? Are you emotional? Like what mm -hmm. what what's really going on? So it really does mm -hmm. it really does pay off to pay attention. To your body during that and kind of recognizing what real hunger is when you feel satisfied and just kind of embracing that little bit of hunger exactly when it comes to nutrition i think your point brian is it's not a case of not listening to it it's about how you think about what you're hearing and feeling yeah yeah exactly when you, when you feel that hunger really you really got to dig in and work out what it means what is it i mean if you if you're in an aggressive cut you're supposed to be hungry a lot of a lot of the time, right? So it's actually a really positive cue. Uh, I've got a post up coming about that actually. Just just you know how to take uh, thoughts, feelings, emotions, and actually translate them into something positive all the time as much as possible. Um, and I think hunger in that situation, as you say, it, you you really are supposed to be hungry. So listening to your body there and thinking like hungry, gotta eat, not gonna work. Yeah, right. No, it's, yeah. Uh, yeah, if you're in a cutting phase and you're, oh, I never feel hungry or whatever, then you, know, <laughs> so it's up there. You, you should be feeling and recognizing different degrees of hunger yeah. as well. Like I, I love going to bed feeling just that, that little bit of hunger. Can't do it, Scott. Pardon me? I can't go to bed hungry. You can't go to bed hungry? No. Nope. That's I'm interesting. Baby. Yeah. Big can't do it. Yeah. See, I, I enjoy that. I enjoy going to bed, feeling a little light, feeling a little hunger. Um, towards the end of a cut, sometimes that hunger is a little bit greater. But to me, that's kind of, mm -hmm. it, it sets the tone for me. I feel, I feel pretty good. And then I wake up feeling nice and light and uh, a little hungry from that point. It's just sleep quality. I sleep better on a full yeah. stomach, bottom line. Yeah, yeah that's, that's important. Me, yeah. And that, that, that's, I think that's a great, I think that's a great point. Um, for this this topic like really being rather than listening to what someone else says like they it, it's probably where this whole don't eat after seven o'clock sure. you know, like, like brian and i resonate with that um my workout partners they respond really well to that but just because it works for us uh yes. doesn't mean it's going to work for you you really have to pay attention to yourself you can't just follow someone else's guidelines to a t you've got to really it's okay to follow in the beginning but pay attention to Shit, yeah. I'm having a shitty sleep, and and that's worse off than going to bed hungry because that can that can have negative impacts on your results and, and yeah. For me, it's just a case of I, I don't eat particularly late. I won't eat much past eight o'clock. Eight o'clock's for no other than it's just practical challenges. I go to bed an hour and a half after that, and I don't want to eat right on top of bedtime. But uh, for me, I'd rather be I'd rather be hungry most of the day when I'm busy and active. And then take in the bulk of my calories later in the day, uh, and sleep on a full stomach. Just, just, just helps with a lot of things. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's whatever fits your lifestyle. Is that's the whatever like will allow you to be the most compliant. Yeah, exactly, exactly. That's, that's the biggest thing, certainly. But yeah. I mean, I got I got guys who we institute that 
no eating after 7 p.m., 8 p.m. thing. We, what we do is we literally, we pretend that it's a real thing. And just because they need this artificial, they need that wall. Yeah. Otherwise, you know, so, so we pretend like it's fucking gremlins. Like if you eat after 8 p.m., like, you, <laughs> like you're going to turn into, you know, all hell's going to break loose. So, yep. I mean, it, you know, it's, it's silly and it's childish, but it's something that's so easy for them to follow. And then they just don't make bad choices. Because if they if you give them a little bit of freedom, especially when they're tired and they're stressed and they've had a long day, they're not going to just eat, you know, a, a few stalks of bro- broccoli and, you know, some, some dry chicken. They're going to they're gonna have comfort food. So you, if you kind of, for a while, we'll put up this wall. Okay, you're not allowed to eat after 8 p.m. Yep. And, you know, it works. I mean, as long as you realize why it's working. Like, there's not yep. some... Yeah. There's not some physiological voodoo taking place. It's just, it's all psychological, so... Yeah, like the fasted cardio in the morning yeah. or whatever. Yeah. yeah, just skipping breakfast for some people, whatever. It's not... Yeah, there's no voodoo behind it. It's just, it's a rule. I think we all yeah. respond well to having some sort of set of rules in place to follow yeah. initially. Especially at first, yeah. Yes, at, at, in the beginning. And pay yes. close attention to how you're responding to that and then make any necessary adjustments based on how your body's responding. Yeah, yep. totally, totally. Yeah, all about awareness. I think that's listening to your body. That's kind of where I think it's kind of falls under the awareness and mindfulness. And, mm-hmm. and really, it's, it's, it's broad in that uh, it applies to every single thing that we're doing throughout the day. And I mean, we're just rushing to get on this, uh, this podcast right now. And I think Brian and I, at least, were scarfing back. I mean, I was whipping up my eggs in, in the last 10 minutes before I, I got in here. And as I was rushing it down, so I didn't enjoy that meal as much as I could have. And I think when I do really take my time to eat the meal and kind of savor every bite, I find it, satis- <laughs> it, it satisfies me. It really does. And when I rush, you know, I rush through it, like scarfing it back, it's like, just go, go, go. It's it's very easy to continue picking, but if I really take my time, enjoy that meal, savor every bite, I appreciate it a lot more. It seems to satisfy me more as well. Maybe it's all in my head. I don't fucking know, but uh, it works. It, wor- it works for me. So it, and it's it's a good practice to begin with because our lives are so freaking crazy and chaotic anyways. Freaking slowing down, enjoying your meal. Um, I think it plays, uh, it can play a big role in your success. Uh, throat a cutting face especially oh absolutely absolutely yeah and i think that going back to the you know listening or not listening or thinking differently about how you feel like hunger in particular is a really odd one because you can eat a pretty good sized portion of food calorie wise and be hungry very soon thereafter which you know doesn't make any sense mm-hmm. physiologically it, it, it's you, you, you know you have the full stomach. You've just taken in 800 calories of food. You 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 should not be hungry. And so what you're you know there's 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 a lot of potential there for misinterpretation of how you're feeling and you know misreading cues and signals from your body and that digestive process that you're going through because um, it will pass. You know I've quite quite often noticed that half an hour afterwards I'm still feeling hungry. Wait an hour I'm feeling comfortable. And so as again it's it's about observation before action really. Yeah. You know, you, you've really got to sort of understand how your body works and that can vary that feeling and sensation can vary with different food types too oh right. yeah that's where the, like the macro composition everyone says that doesn't matter it doesn't matter it's like it's once you get into the more the nuances of this that's where that starts to to matter a bit more like, yes you know, like the, the macro composition of the meal like yes yeah. you know if you just eat a no protein no fat just a big dose of carbs for a lot of people it's just not that it doesn't satiate. Yeah. You know, some people does, but again, it's exactly. Just, yeah. Yeah. And, and sometimes just having like a heavy protein based meal, even though protein tends to be more yeah. satisfying, it still may yeah. kind of need those carbs in there to really make, feel complete. Yeah. Just mm-hmm. Feel like you ate a complete full meal. It's fats. Oh, yeah. It's fats for me. I, protein doesn't mm-hmm. fill me up. I, I can eat endless amounts of protein and still feel hungry, but fats uh, kind of have a, pretty satiating effect on me. Mm-hmm. I, it's funny though, when I get people, like I, I always steer towards higher protein intakes, you know, mm-hmm. especially during fat loss, like higher than, like certainly higher than the RDA and all that. Yeah. Um, but I find that a lot, some people give them too much protein, their, their sweet cravings go through the roof. 
especially if they, after they have a really heavy protein meal, they'll just, they'll, they'll email me like, you know, I, I'm just dying for some, you know, for, for some candy or for something, you know, whenever I eat this high protein dinner. So it's just, it, it, for some, it can trigger that. So, yep. you know, give them a little bit to satiate them. That can work, you know. And that's where awareness comes in. Like those are the things that really pay off to document, to be aware of. Like that's where tracking your meals really comes in handy and then making note, how do you feel during the meal? How do you feel after the meal? And like, like an hour after the meal, a few hours after the meal. And yeah, Mm -hmm. if the meal kind of sparks some Mm -hmm. sweet tooth action going on there, then it's, it's, it's a sign something, something's going on. So I say, you know, have a diet soda, but now I just read it. Fuck it. It, Causes all sorts of crazy ass <laughs> brain cancer. So I'm like, okay, can't do that no more. So damn, uh, I'm running out of options. Put it on the Jello. Jello. <laughs> yeah, Jello. Jello. I used to do that. I did that one year when I was dying. I was just a, a sugar free Jello freak. That was just, oh, that was horrible. <laughs> yeah. I probably like three packets a day. Oh, I want to be 20 again. Yeah. <laughs> That's funny. But going back to something like what Paul said, like really paying attention like after a meal when you know you shouldn't really be hungry after a big satisfying meal it really kind of depends on where you're at in your journey for someone who um has refeeds kind of planned refeeds or just listening to your body type refeeds if it's been if it's been a few days uh even close to a week where you haven't had a really good refeed and you have a big meal and that doesn't satisfy you you eat more food and you still don't feel satisfied uh that's to me, like I experience those when when I go several low calorie days in a row, uh, I just and and especially if I train pretty hard on on legs or back, and all of a sudden my appetite I just can't be satisfied. Those are days where I'm like, even if it's not planned, I'm like, this is it's a refueling yeah. day for me. My body is trying to tell me that I need to I need to refuel up. So I I give into that for a few meals. Like I'll have a couple big meals back to back to back and my calories will be a little bit higher. I used to run into trouble where it would just be like a whole day. I'd be, I'd get to that point where I was full and satisfied, but then keep going when it's just not necessary. So it's, yeah. it, it pays to to listen to your body. And, and if it really does, if, if you don't seem to be satisfied, feed it, but do it intelligently. Don't, yeah. don't go in excess where you get to that point of feeling full and you just keep going there. Yep. Yeah, I'd be really careful there, though. I mean, I mean, geez, like knowing when to refeed, like that is something I, you know, obviously we're all online and seeing what other people are doing, and I yeah. see a lot of people just justifying they're you know, justifying having a wanting a binge and saying, "Oh, I need this refeed. I need this refeed." So I think you have to be really, really astute with your physiological cues that you actually need this. Yes. I mean, uh, it's I think ninety percent of people are going to misread that. Yeah, I know exactly. Yeah, like I, you're probably right. It probably is up there. I'm, I'm going to put myself in that camp too, right? I mean, I, I would be able fairly easily to convince myself that yeah. it's been three weeks, four weeks of decent deficit, and you know, I've the scale is stored for ten days now, and a, a, a refeed is the key because I can't cut my calories. And I can convince myself of that pretty easily. Versus find another fifty calories, hundred calories wait a little bit longer, add an extra half hour session a week of cardio, right? There's, there's lots of choices, but I can convince myself I need that refeed. And there's the yeah. difference right there. There's like yeah. awareness. That's awareness. It, I've been at that point where I have had those conversations. I'm trying to convince myself that, oh, yeah, yeah, I can yeah. do this. I <laughs> know. I know when I'm frigging yeah. trying to build a case for, oh, yeah, yeah. I deserve this refeed. Right deserve now. It. Yeah, it's a completely <laughs> different thing when, when you're really feeling – Holy shit! I am not satisfied right now. I need more food. It's, it's, yep. it's a feeling, and yet, I honestly, it's it's probably just been the past year or two where I've really yeah. been able to recognize that and kind of auto regulate my refeeds. I've been at this for a long time. I, uh-huh. I really think that's where I really enjoyed the structure of going three days low calorie, kind of a little uh-huh. lower carb, and then bumping it up, having that that carb cycling approach yep. and then I, I would gradually extend it. I got to that point where really three days low, one day high worked really well for a long time. It would still work really well yeah. for me right now. But then I thought, well, if I want to get a little bit more aggressive with this, let's see how much longer I can push the lower days and I go four, five, 
six days. I'm like, yeah. this is this is good, and six kind of works well. And but having that set structure really helped me kind of build that sense of awareness and, and kind of challenge myself to push another day in a in a lower calorie and in, in a more aggressive deficit, um, and kind of being aware of those signals that that's going yeah. on. And then yeah, so it takes time. It's not something I would throw in in a beginner or even in oh, intermediate and say, listen <laughs> to your body here for your refeed. I think it's important to kind of have a structured refeed um, system in place and kind of challenge it as you progress along. Yeah. Like I just used one on a, on a, a girl I'm coaching and she was, uh, and the way I knew she needed one is we were about as low as I felt comfortably going in calories. You know, I didn't want to start adding more work right now. Uh, I verified her compliancy twice, like both, you know, what she told me and looking at her log, you know, I asked some kind of leading questions where you can usually find out where people are actually overeating when they think they're being really accurate mm -hmm. and everything looked good. So then, you know, and her mood, I could just tell by talking to her, not through email, but like directly through Skype, I could tell her mood was a little bit, a little bit down. So then I said, okay, we're going to do a refeed. And sure enough, by the next week, she had lost two pounds. So it's just like, you have to rule out a lot of things. Yes. You know, yeah. Um, I don't know. Yeah. My, yeah. My, for, for a while, while. for yeah. definitely, definitely for a while. And then, yeah. but that's it. The, the, the sooner you can start paying attention to your body signals and, and yeah. the conversations going on in your head. Yeah. Um, because yeah, like, like you shouldn't be convincing yourself that you need a refeed. It yeah. should be like, you should know, holy shit. No. I, I just, this is a definite, there's no doubt about it. I need more food in me right now if I'm going to continue on yeah. uh, with my day right now. Yep. Yeah. The last time I knew I needed one personally, because I'm not a huge believer in them for myself anymore, I guess. But uh, last year, I, I was on so low calories at the end of my diet that I, I almost passed out in a Best Buy. I was, I was looking at big screen TVs after I worked out. <laughs> Next thing I know, I'm like, I'm all glazy eyed. And, and that night I had a refeed. And uh, I was with a bunch of guys and I ended up eating like there's a bunch of girls there too. I ended up eating half of their meals as <laughs> I couldn't, I couldn't stop eating. And everyone was laughing because I had this vein in my head that was like, <laughs> Oh yeah. I was like pulsing out. And so, and the next day I felt great and training was great again. So yeah, that's, so when I pass out in a department store, that's what I know. I'm very close to like <laughs> what I need to refeed. So yeah, and I had that after my leg day last week uh, as several days in a, and low calories and uh, it was at the end of the leg workout and I'm driving home I hold I gotta hurry up and get home or I'm gonna <laughs> so it's a good thing the gym's right around the corner but uh uh yeah I've been there so are you do you not do refeeds much do you kind of keep the low calorie deficit for as long as you possibly can and basically try to try to hold on to that for for the long term during a cut I do man I like to just like I'm all about I think the most important thing, whether you're brand new or, you know, whatever seasoned veteran, whatever that means is consistency and like getting in a pattern and just being, you know, really in tune with what, you know, what foods work for you and, and your energy levels. And, and I just find like when you start throwing in refeeds and, and you start looking for, you start looking for cues that aren't really there. Mm -hmm. like if, if you know, like if your coach tells you right away, Oh, then we're going to start having refeeds. You're like, Oh fuck. Yeah. Okay. When, you know, when do I get this? You know? So yeah. if you kind of like, you can't remove that. And even for me, like coaching myself, I just remove that from the equation. I just work on yeah. being 90% compliant, then 95%, then 100%. Then I just, yeah, then I'll, eventually those, yeah, I, I will have an occasion where I'm like, you know, fuck, I got to eat. I got to eat. But usually then I can be a little bit more, I'll have hard data to look at. I'm like, okay, yeah. let's get, you know, my measurements aren't improving. My, my lifts are dropping. You know, I feel like shit. You know, like it, it's 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 time. Yeah. yeah, there's definitely a lot of psychology in yeah. around refeeds in particular, but that hunger it it it's inherently a negative state, right? It's a signal yeah. from your body that something is wrong and yeah. needs rectifying, and so it is a constant process of balancing that. How far yeah. into that spectrum have I gone? Do I need to go to meet my current goals? And knowing when to take, as I say, knowing, knowing when to just listen and watch and feel and take it all in and knowing when to act. 
and it, it, it's gray it's all shades of gray there's there's no right answer and what worked for you this time won't work for you next time and what works for you with these foods won't work for you with those foods so it's like there is not a simple answer it is really as you say scott like a, a continuous process of observation record keeping um awareness mindfulness just actually thinking about it instead of just acting it was so habitually uh conditioned to hunger equals eat <laughs> you know it's natural it's it's what we're supposed to do but um you're fighting that all the way so you need as much data as possible and you really need to sit and think about it pretty hard mm -hmm. and, and sometimes to be honest a lot of those cues are just a sign that you know like okay maybe the maybe i gotta adjust the diet itself maybe i gotta bring things you know maybe i'm just gonna bring the carbs up a little bit you know just make subtle changes um like refeed's got, it's kind of a sledgehammer um but like it you know, it's fun. Everyone loves to overeat and have, you know, have big binges. And, uh, uh, but yeah, be careful with that. Like I don't take, yeah. uh, for myself, I don't take like the whole cheat day approach. Oh, that's bullshit. Yeah, yeah. No, I, like my refeed is maybe up to maintenance, like close to maintenance, right? It's not if I go, oh, okay. go crazy, right. go in a surplus <laughs> or anything. I, deficit, <laughs> it's, it's, not, it's not drastic. It's just getting in that a little bit of extra food to kind of feel normal uh yeah. for a bit yeah yeah i'm not I'm, I'm not big on those like my refeed days are not big refeed days so. yeah. very rare like that maybe once a month uh, yeah i might do something like that or i'll be in a surplus on that refeed day but for the most part my refeeds are still close to maintenance and and maybe just a tiny tiny deficit mm -hmm. yeah well, mine, mine are <laughs> typically a lot bigger um, <laughs> But yeah, that, that, that's that's a, that's a great point though. That you could easily just call that just a higher card day. Yeah, you know what I mean. Like, and then it's and yeah. just change the label, and, and it kind of changes the whole how you look at it. Yeah, maintenance yeah. day. You could, have, you could have deficit day, then a maintenance day, and yeah. it kind of just it that puts it into a different perspective than refeed being balls out cheat day type thing. Yeah, and I'm I'm just blown away how many uh, like I work with a lot of guys, and, and just a lot of guys have. You know, unresolved food issues or resolved food, food issues that like refeeds and shit like that tend, you know, can kind of re trigger that. Oh, without a doubt. And uh, so, yeah, I'm very kind of, yeah, that's one thing I'm cautious with. Yeah. Is, is, are those things. So, all right, let's move on to uh, training here training and listening to your body. A lot, lot of different things going on there. Um, again, kind of, it takes a while to get to the point of auto regulation with your training where I think in the beginning it is, it is very beneficial to have your set plan and going up and wait, like have, have a, a progress map where you want to either bump up the, the poundage that you're lifting, do more reps or add more volume to your training. But uh, there's, mm -hmm. as you, as you progress along, it, it really pays to kind of listen to your body where you might have a day where you walk into the gym and you're supposed to lift heavy and, 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 and bump up the weight or bump up the reps and you just don't freaking have it. Um, mm. Rather than grind through that, a lot of times it's better off just uh, dialing it back for that day. Oh yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, definitely. I mean, I think there's two, there's two, I guess there's two axes for like uh, auto regulation and listening to your body. You know, you, you, one, one axis I think about as fundamentally around injury prevention basically right there are a bunch of signals bunch of things that are going to go on in your body and if you're paying enough attention and if you interpret them correctly uh you, you're going to make some better choices and that's usually around injury prevention and then there's another whole aspect to it which is some combination of mindfulness mind muscle connection getting the most out of an individual rep getting the most out of an individual workout getting the right amount of effort uh sort of trying to gauge in compliance with you, you know, with the plan, with the intent of what you went in there. And, or as you say, listening to your body, if it's just a day where energy levels are low, listening to that and making sense of it. So those two sets of signals can be very similar, actually. And this is happening, something that's saying, ah, oh, you're just a little tired today, push a little harder, dig a little deeper versus that didn't feel quite right. Maybe think about stopping to pick a different exercise, you know, and that signal can look quite similar. Yeah, like I, I should qualify. When I say listening to the body, if it has anything to do with 
pain or joint restriction or like discomfort in exercise. There's no listening. It's, yes. it's, it's fucking telling me. Yeah, like, exactly. Don't do it. You know, it's like, it, I agree. Yeah. Totally. Right. But the challenge with that is yeah. when, yeah, the pain signals from like a, a muscle being worked at close to capacity and the pain signal of a muscle that is complaining because it's ever so slightly out of alignment, disagrees with this exercise or is still under duress from the previous workout. It's, pretty similar on times and it's caught me out a number of times with experience you can pick it up eventually mm -hmm. but especially when you've got like a bunch of people banging on the drum which is like beast mode go harder no pain no gain go big go home doesn't matter like the list is endless right so uh it doesn't help when you've got that mindset going in or you've got that you know sort of drum being banged that when you go in you're like wow this actually hurts quite a bit but i've got to just push through you know you, yeah. picking out the difference between impending doom <laughs> and a good workout <laughs> you need to get so smart that pretty quick we definitely we need we need clear it's, we're in an industry where right. we do not have clear definitions for a lot yeah. of different things whether right. it's intensity or pain and yeah it freaking hurts like hell when you're working through that burn that that, that crazy lactic acid build up where your muscles is breaking down like it's but you can mentally keep you can push through it when you know it's that kind of burn but if it's a pain you're like this is this is killing me like when i'm doing uh, a crazy intense lunge set or jumping lunges or jumping squats or, or or even leg press where i'm cranking out a high rep leg press 10 reps i may like be burning but i'm like mentally i can flip that switch and keep i can almost push out 10 15 more where i could have easily given up at 10 but that that burn it's it's almost embracing that burning sensation and embracing that pain uh, but if I feel it in my knees, in my joints, in the tendons, yeah. that's a, to me, that's a different pain. Yeah. I, I, it doesn't feel anything near that pain that I'm working through um, to work through that burn. Um, so it, it's different. I, I wouldn't label it pain. It's, yeah. it's, a, it's a fucking on fire burn. Uh, I don't know. We need to need a different definition for that kind of thing. Because, yeah, I, that whole no pain, no gain thing doesn't sit too well. Uh, but again, I think that's just where a lot of a lot of relatively, well, you know, beginner to intermediate trainees are going to struggle. They're going to. It takes a while to really. I'm not talking about like you know you, when you're doing and your knee your kneecap feels like it's going to fly off. Something's clearly wrong. Uh, but but it, it it can be very subtle and it, and I, and I find it a lot. And I think you know going back to mindfulness and and thinking about you know when you're doing something like leg press, leg extensions, any kind of quad work or, or, any, or any kind of exercise, you, you know where you should be feeling it. And so part of that mindfulness, part of that thinking needs to be in, if you're feeling it somewhere where you shouldn't, that that's a cue, you know, that's something to pay attention to. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Yeah. I have zero, I have a zero tolerance policy for that now. I just, if like any pain whatsoever, that kind of pain, like, yeah, you know, any yeah. type of joint or, this doesn't feel right. Stop. Just because there's like, there's so many workarounds. Like there's, you know, every, every conceivable thing that you're trying to accomplish, there's, there's a dozen workarounds. So you don't have to be, you know, a slave to this one particular exercise. Like again, unless you're, unless that's your sport, unless yeah. your sport, yeah. unless your sport sure. is performing this exercise. So that's like, that's a completely different, you know, topic. Then, then you better, then you just got to reinforce your technique somehow. But if it's, if you're just doing this for, you know, to look better, to get bigger, to lose weight or, or whatever. Like I just always say, just stop, you know, reassess or we'll find a workaround. I mean, yeah, yeah, definitely. Especially guys over 35, 40. Oh, I think it's God. crucially yeah. important for us. Um, but I, I don't want to peg it to just us. Like I wish I could tell my 18, 25 year old self, old self <laughs> oh, slap you in the head for some of the yeah. stuff that I continue oh, yeah. to do, even though I, I felt that discomfort even if it wasn't pain yeah. it's just some of those things uh, some of the incline benching that i was doing that i could i could feel something going on in there but just just keep grinding through it or the lower back on some deadlift just 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 keep pushing through that shit man this is this is the point when you're in your 40s where you start to really feel those mistakes yeah. that you made back then so i i, I really <laughs> encourage the younger guys to like, grasp this concept a hell of a lot sooner if you feel any discomfort yeah. or pain I can move on, do other shit. There's so yeah. much you can do. Uh, yeah. Why get hung up on something just because it's in your program or you see someone else doing it? Yeah, totally. And, and you mentioned the program. Like, that's the biggest thing, too. I mean, like, 
if you're going to listen, you know, to use that phrase, listen to your body in a training context, like, like if you're trying to get strong, I'm a big believer in you probably shouldn't deviate too much from your program. That you should ideally that's where you, you know, the whole gross and balls thing, you know, just really try to hit your numbers. I mean, that, that works for strength. I find, um, but if you're, you know, you're trying to get bigger, I think there's more room to call audibles, like add some volume here. If you feel it, like you've got that inclination. Um, if you just feel like you just can't work enough, one of those days, like everything's clicking then do a little bit more, you know, yeah. that bring the intensity think, down to a little yeah. more volume. Yeah, I, but I would say having the courage to, yeah. to change an exercise when you feel something isn't right. I think that is growing balls right there. I think that's, that's a big, that's well, a no, like, cause big it, step in maturity when you, when you can recognize that and say, you know what, fuck it. I, I don't, I shouldn't be doing this right now. I, I should be moving on. Yep. Yeah, like, like strength. It, when I say strength, that it assumes like you're dealing in, you know, reps, typically reps under five or sets of under five reps. So, I mean, if you, just because you got the urge to do more, you can quickly dig a hole. You know what I mean? If you're doing deadlifts and you're like, you know, oh man, I feel great today. I'm going to do three more sets. You know, like you can very quickly dig a hole that you just won't recover from. Whereas if you train for hypertrophy, now you're doing sets of like 10 to 15 reps. You're doing you know, curls and shit like that. You're not going to do much damage. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? You know, damage in, in a recovery context. So that's why I think the stakes are a little bit higher when you're training for strength to yeah. try to stick to your program and when in doubt, do less when you're like, cause you're just because there's yep. so, much, so much more potential to screw everything up. Oh, for yeah. sure. Yeah. So yeah, the ledge is definitely narrower for sure. You're walking a narrower ledge without doubt. Yeah. I think another thing, you know, going on to the, or, or, or sort of staying on topic, but this catches me out a lot. So this is what I'm sharing, which is you can barbell curls. Do, do, you do that first set, very light, just a warm up. Elbow joints a little, yeah, it's kind of, kind of a little, there's a few small complaints in there. You're like, yeah, yeah, yeah that's, not, that's not, it's not great, but it's not terrible. So you do a warm up set, you know, you take, take another minute or two, come in, do a second warm up set. It's definitely a little better. And then by the, you know, you're getting ready to do that first working set. Things seem pretty straight. Um, I get that a lot where. Yeah. How do you feel three days later? Right. So it varies. <laughs> it varies. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, you know, sometimes I think I'm reading those right. I'm getting like a pretty good feel for, yep, this is. Well, you know, this is not, not normal, but this is acceptable. This is an acceptable tolerance. Yeah. This is just you warm up carefully uh, versus something, you know, yes, everything is going to get, you know, by the time you get some blood in there, some heat in there and, and a little more inflammation in there, everything is going to feel fine and the nerves will sort of calm down. Then you can train normally. It's very different to, you know, just needing a little bit more of a warm up. But again, like it's an area where I catch myself out quite a lot. Yeah, and, and even like the execute how you're executing the, the movement. I see people completely abandon an exercise. They can oh, back squat hurts my knees every time, or lunges hurt my knees, and they look at their their setup, <laughs> and, it, and it's their setup <laughs> that's completely off. And it's not the machine. You're just it's what you're doing. <laughs> yeah, how you're how you're performing that that right. exercise. So you get them to change their foot position just a little bit there. Oh, fuck, that feels amazing. And they, they would have completely given up on that exercise. Yep. I think it was a bad exercise, um, but it was yeah. just how they were performing the exercise. Bad. But it, it pays to kind of listen to those different things and, and try out different positions. Uh, and again, that's where awareness comes into play. Yeah, exactly. It's like a lot of people are shoulder pressing. Like they'll, <laughs> they'll, they'll, they'll be kind of apprehensive and then they'll warm up and like, hey, this feels good. And they'll do some sets and like, this is actually going really good. And then, and the workout, they're like, fuck yeah, get overhead press again. Like, That's I'm, right. This is great. And then yeah. the next day, a few days later, they're like, oh, I know <laughs> they can't, you know, can't even, you know, can't even type at work or certainly not squat or anything. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, so it's like, fuck, dude, you got to be a little bit more, you got to think picture, though. Think picture. Yeah, definitely been yeah. there. Definitely been there. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But yeah, I, I mean, so we're, we've talked a bit about like injuries, avoiding injuries, and awareness in that sense, and, and learning when to, to cut things back. But I think uh, where the fun part comes into play with training and awareness is the, that, that mind muscle connection thing and, yeah. and being able to take an exercise and make the subtle little adjustments that aren't even visible to the naked eye, the, the intentions, mm -hmm. the, 
the, the squeezing the hands inward on a bar or outward or um, just in a row, driving your elbows a little bit out or keeping them a little bit in and just making the subtle little changes, mm-hmm. uh, maybe even driving. Like I see a lot of people rowing and, and they're coming up high. Their shoulders are up high, like shoulders down and yeah, drive your yeah. elbows down towards your hips. Do you feel it in a different area in a muscle? And I, yeah. I like that kind of yeah. playfulness. That that's, To me, that's the, the fun scent, the fun aspect of Definitely. awareness and listening to your body while you're training it uh, mm-hmm. i love that component definitely yeah yeah and as i always tell people like back in time like you know 30 40 years there's all these exercise variations that just nobody does anymore and you know yeah some of them were yeah some of them were useless and some of them were at best uh you know just trivial changes but there's a bunch that are different ways to work the muscle that at, at the very least they keep you mentally engaged mm-hmm. um and in just and in some cases it, it can just really kickstart you know you know i don't know if new growth but certainly just a new love of training it's different it's a different yeah. stimulus and i love all these old books man i got like a is it my other vince garage yeah, yeah, I, got like, <laughs> yeah I guess uh, i just yeah. always go through them like my bill pro books i mean there's just oh, little, yeah. little tweaks that you can do um and again, at, at the very least, it just keeps your, your, your mind open to ways to to do exercise without being pigeonholed. Like people are, they, they do like six exercises. It's like fuck, dude. You know, expand your repertoire. Yep. Yeah. Yep. And how you train them? It's yeah. a completely different feel. There's so many different training techniques and tactics it can use for that same exercise that can produce a completely totally. different different feel. Um, yeah, yeah I think I think the thing that I really love about this is um, it just it really forces you to be present in the moment. It just block out all the distractions. I think you gain so much more from your training session. Not only do your do your muscles benefit a lot more, but mentally, uh, even from a stress reducing aspect, because you blocked out all that shit for your hour hour and a half. Um, it's just, I think you walk out of that gym a, a better person overall, just for that, that mental focus that you put into the training. I think I, that practice in itself can carry over to, to other areas in your life as well. Yep. Absolutely. I mean, you know, that that mindfulness, that, that kind of mind-muscle connection, when, you, when you're, I mean, two classics, right? Any kind of horizontal pull, any kind of vertical pull. So, you, you know, you've got huge slabs of meat on your back and your lats and a whole, you know, and traps, rhomboids and everything else. You've got, you've got a lot of back muscle. And you do any one of those two exercises, the vast majority of people really struggle to feel those exercises in the target muscle. Instead, like burning out arms, burning out biceps, brachialis, like they're just, they're taxing everything, terrace major, they're, they're taxing everything but the sort of large muscles. And just by taking the weight down, really playing with angles, playing with body position, trying to make that connection to the muscle itself, you, you can really feel a difference. I can I can dramatically feel a difference when I turn my hands into hooks instead of gripping the dumbbell in a death grip and do bent over rows, right? If you just use a hook grip, keep your elbow snug to your body, slightly forward lean, you know, just like take the dumbbell slightly forward, just 10 degrees, it's not a lot, and then like contract that lat on the way up with a hooked hand, it's dramatically different to gripping the dumbbell and rowing up and down. And it, you only get that if you're looking for it. You have to actually look, you actually have to spend some time, some cycles and actually think about what's going on. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, I'm, I'm a big believer in that, man. I'm just, uh, again, especially as the injury starts to accumulate or, or even if you would reach a, a growth plateau and everyone, <laughs> everyone does, kind of going back and just, what am I trying to do here? You know, am I engaging in what the muscle? Am I feeling it where I'm supposed to be feeling it? Should I try something else? You know, mm-hmm. it's just, yeah. Yep. I think other areas, um, well, even rest days, programming in, in rest days, some, sometimes it's, uh, well, for myself, designing programs and going through programs for a couple of decades here, it's, it's kind of, I know when I'm setting up a program where that rest day needs to be put in place. Um, but sometimes life kind of throws in little, little, um, I don't know, challenges where it, your rest day, you're going to move it. And, uh, for us, uh, for example, this week, uh, we're taking the weekend off of training. Normally we'd be training today and taking Sunday off. So knowing that, uh, knowing that we were going to have two days off at that point, we kind of shifted our, 
we didn't take a, a rest day earlier in the week that should have been there. Uh, and definitely we noticed for, for both of us, our strength went way down for that work. And we could feel right. Even though I walked in the gym feeling good, like feeling ready to attack that workout. It wasn't until <laughs> the first working set where I'm like, holy shit, does this feel heavy? And I was all excited. I was really expecting to bump up the weight for that workout. And, uh, no, it just, it, it wasn't the case. So it's just getting, knowing, listening to your body and knowing when to kind of take a rest day is important. And as well as um, if you're incorporating some form of cardio uh, into your training, I think different, really knowing how different splits uh, impact your, your body and where to kind of get cardio in there. Or sometimes cardio can be a, a no-go and you may have to just stick with brisk walking instead. Mm -hmm. I find that's my case Right now, I was really enjoying cardio on my, my previous plan. It was a more of a body part split routine. Here on this upper lower split, I find doing any form Ooh. of cardio or hit, forget it. I, I just I can't recover enough between the workouts. My, my workouts will suffer, whereas before the cardio was enhancing my performance in a certain split. So now I just find for, forget the cardio this this phase just brisk walk and do the active recovery and keep myself moving that way. So a lot of listening to the body there, even though I, I would love to get in that cardio to increase that uh, caloric deficit, um, burn a bit more fat. It's I'm better off just not to, not doing it to, for this yeah. month. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. I'm my new thing is rest months. I'm, I'm <laughs> starting to, I'm serious. I'm starting to think, yeah, the more I program people, the more I think people need more, not rest, like sitting in a bed, like sure. IV, yeah. but just like, you know, still exercising, still working out, but just different focus, you know, more on like just the love of exercise thing, just get it, you know, getting sweat and everything. Yeah. You know, just to recharge the batteries and then fucking go, you know, twice as hard. Yeah. You know, so it is, that's the ebb and flow right yeah. there. Knowing when yeah. to do that. I think there's, it, yeah. it's for us who have been, programming for years it, it's a little bit easier to, to know where to program something that in there but yeah. <laughs> yeah, you never start with that yeah 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 right yeah, you really uh, you kind of and you know you know when your body's feeling pretty beat up and uh you need a bit of a break but uh, and yeah it's a time to yeah rest month <laughs> i like rest that deload month uh, yeah. but yeah, hey all those terms it's just it's a fun it, you're, yeah. it's a fun month it's playtime there where you get to yeah. get to do some other different shit. Well, you know, 90% of this game is mental, right? So you, you've got to give your brain, you got to give your mind a break and your body a break. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Those are times where I really like including uh, a lot of single limb movements, yeah, like totally. leg presses, Romanian deadlifts, uh, uh, step ups, different stuff for the legs. They're just, yeah, it's a little totally. easier, but it, it, because you're going lighter. Um, I think that's a great, opportunity to um, really become mindful mm -hmm. uh, and aware and uh, really listening to your body because you can kind of pick out any yeah. uh, imbalance. Yeah, I guess you can totally. yeah, start definitely. working on one limb at a time. You're, Damn, things definitely feel exactly. a little bit different and, and it really helps totally. to, um, kind of work some of that out. That's right. When you're trying to get maximum strong, that is not the time start introducing new lifts, you know, because, right. like, oh, you know, I want to, I want to see how this works. That's when you want to use, that. you know, your, your breadship, the stuff that, you know, you know you've, you've been coached on it by somebody who's really good. And just, it's like walking to, you know, it's like second nature. Those, that's great for strength. You don't want to mess with that. But yeah, right. then you got to have phases where you do other shit. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Very cool, man. Scary. Guys, I think this has been a hell of a freaking conversation. This has been a lot of fun. Time has flown by. Um, any any closing statements? Closing arguments? Closing arguments, yeah. No, I mean, for me, I was only going to ask, like, do you guys, uh, have you consistently or tried any kind of, like, auto-regulation in your workouts? Specific oh. techniques? Whether it be um, like, like, using rate of perceived exertion to, like, try and actually measure and monitor and adjust like no i'm not going to use the word intensity because that simply is load on the bar but you know what i mean uh, effort um or you know you've got people like delanave right with his with his listen you know you sort of test before every exercise and you test after every yeah. set and you listen to your body like and 
there's a huge following for that and uh, you know there's there seems to be some good science in it uh, mm-hmm. i just wondered if you guys have tried anything in particular and had some success with something like that i i don't <laughs> i don't have a scale that i go by uh, an rp or anything i just know i fucking i, I lift that like i said this this week when we did the uh the bench press and i'm like right away i'm like fuck, i this feels heavy it's not a day where i'm going to be trying to bump up and wait there it's it's a day where i'm going to take a little bit take it easy a little bit more and 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 dial things back that's kind of my form of auto regulation um and just and just knowing when an exercise just doesn't feel right and changing things out but no i'm not at the end of every workout having my rp scale and going circling it yeah yeah i was a seven today i don't fucking know if i was a seven yeah. or a nine or whatever mm. i gave it i did my best today and and uh yeah. um yeah it wasn't balls out pushing to failure type thing but it was it was a solid effort i just try to get my not mm. my i guess you can get caught up in what what your best effort is well, but there's, there's days where i'm not gonna get a, exactly i'm gonna leave another rep in the tank yep. type thing and yeah yeah so kind of and that was one of the, that was the case this week. Like, yeah, just I, I had to leave an extra rep in the tank, and uh, mm. but yeah, it paid off. And that was it was just because I just I just didn't have it that day. I wasn't recovered enough from the yeah. previous work. You know, I, well, that's the thing is, I know certainly at, right after I get in there, what I want to, what ideally I should be able to accomplish. Yep. So I have my whatever, however many exercises. I know how much weight I lift, lifted last time, and for how many reps. So I know that. And then it all just depends on what my goal is. If, you know, if it's, if it's a, a pure strength phase, you know, I'm a little more apt to like, if, if things aren't going up, like then I would be apt to like, okay, I'm going to call it just going to, you know, just get in some lighter work today and, and try again next time. But if it's a hypertrophy phase, I'll, I would do a different type of audible. Maybe I would change the, I would change the exercise. Maybe I would change the rep range. There's, there, I would just, there's more cards to play, I find. Um, again, I just, I've always believed that like hypertrophy is much more of a, I don't want to say holistic process because that sounds like hippy dippy bullshit, but there's like, there's different ways to fatigue the muscle. Maybe it's, it's and if something's not working that particular day, I've got so many other things that I can do. Um, you know, whether it's changing exercises or changing the order or changing the rest interval or just different ways to overload the muscle. Yeah. You know, yeah. You know metabolic stress, like whatever, you know what I mean? Um, and then there's fat loss and I, yeah. How do I already regulate the training during that? Well, again, there's a lot of moving parts. Well, how low are my is. calories? Like how low are my calories? If I've done a bunch of cardio, if I feel just like, like total dog shit, I will probably just do something else entirely, some form of exercise. Yeah. Right? Mm-hmm. Um, and, and sleep, sleep's a yeah. huge thing. So <laughs> oh yeah, it's gonna have, that's gonna have a big impact on how I train. Yeah, just just the biggest thing is just if it's pure strength, then I think those type of measures are a lot more important in my opinion. Yeah, like, but, then, will, yeah. but then again, there's a like that was a strength focused day that I was supposed to do this week, and my plan was to bump up the numbers. And even though we we should have had a day of rest prior to that, I felt really good going into the gym. Mm-hmm. And my what my plan was to bump that shit out, but yeah. uh, it wasn't until I got to the my working weight where I was like, "Oh my god, this is heavy. There's yeah. no way I can do this." So I'm not going to just because it's in the program to bump it up. Yeah. I, I'm not going to do it for the sake of doing it. It's not. I was much better off just sticking with what I uh, what I did the previous week. I just yeah, I just do think it's funny though, like that everybody thinks, you know, because of. You know, Jim Wendler's book was so immensely popular and it's such a great book at five three one. But now everyone everyone following every possible variation of program thinks that okay, month four or week four I got a deload. I got a deload. Right. It's just like it's like for, no, for that, probably, that might be a week where you're like I got it, yeah. man. Like, it's why like, use oh. why waste that the freaking yeah. strength and energy that you have right now? We fucking give her yeah. take your deload, it's gonna happen. It's gonna happen to yeah. you. Well, the biggest problem with all of those things, right, is life is not on the same schedule as your program. No, no. <laughs> no. It's not on a four-week yeah. schedule. Who God knows what's going to happen in four weeks' time. Yeah. So. yeah. It's like a, Dave Tate said, like, unless you're, like, moving serious weight, like, you're one, you're the top 1% of strength. Like, if, you're, if your life, family life, 
work life, whatever, social life doesn't give you an occasional deload, then you probably need to get a family life, get a social life, you know, get, you know, like life should give you forced deloads now and again. Yep. Whatever, if your kid gets sick, you know, whatever, you go to freaking Disneyland, I don't know. Like you shouldn't have to program in these deloads. I mean, you should be mindful of it. If you've gone week, yeah. you, know, you know, months after month whatever, without, you know, modulating things, you should be mindful of that. But yeah, it's, it's kind of funny. Yeah. 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 So I guess to, yeah, I guess that answers the question that we don't, yeah. we don't necessarily have our, our RPE yeah. Yeah. set in place. Yeah. And yeah, there's, there's going to be a certain programming where the, it's going to be a little bit lower. I'm not going to be giving it everything that I got. Yeah. Uh, but for the most part, I am. I'm, I'm in the gym. I want to work intelligently. Um, yeah. Yeah. It's, it's not. Yeah. It's just that whatever you've got is going to be different workout to work yeah. right? Yeah. Yeah. For That's sure. the key. And the other thing, too, is somebody who's very new, their rate of perceived exertion is completely different than somebody who's much more seasoned. Yeah. Sure. Oh, it's definitely, an, it's definitely something you have to grow into without a doubt. Yeah. So and, nice. and just, yeah, like I said, this is 90% mental, right? You're, a, you're yeah. you, depending on where you are in your head on a given day, you, you can find an extra 10 reps, Scott, in your case, if you really had to, just because it's you, you're using that kind of weight, it's medium intensity work. Yeah. If you really dig deep, you can find 10 more reps. Well, where's your RP on that sort of thing? So that's where it gets tough. Um, that, that, that line is pretty gray. I, I'm, I'm, I'm trying it right now. I'm finding it pretty useful just for a couple of things. It really does kind of help me make smarter choices to some degree. So if I'm really shooting for the 12 to 15 rep range ish, uh, and I put some weight on the bar and you know, I'm, I'm failing at 10, I've picked the wrong load and it's useful. It's just a good cue for me. It's not that I sort of record every single set and say that was an RP 7.5. That was a nine. It's more a case of you had some intent here. You had, a, you had a goal to sort of like eke out progression over time. Yeah. Um, this is the sort of load you're looking at. This is the intensity you wanted to be working at. And look, you're getting it wrong or today it's wrong. Even if it's, even if it's a case of today, I've got low energy and it's wrong. It's still a good cue for me it helps with the mindfulness. It puts the thought in my mind. And if for no other reason, the RPE has been quite useful for that alone. It's making me look for the signal versus just train to failure, train to failure, set to failure, set to failure, you know, whatever that level might be, which I do a lot and I, and my body feels it. So this actually forces me to think, have you got a record two in the tank or not? And if you haven't, you, you, you're pushing the envelope a little bit this set, this set, this set, you know, repeatedly. So I found it useful for that. It's it's a good cue more than some sort of bullet. Yeah, 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 I guess just trying to put a label on something. I think it's, it's, it's yeah. a little bit tough, but yeah, it's, I always, like I know the rep I'm going for, I know the weight that I lifted last week, I have an idea of what I'm gonna do this week. Um, yeah, but in terms of failure, yeah, I, I'm pretty good at knowing when I have a rep in the tank and I may go for like the very last set of each exercise um, a couple weeks out of the month. My workout partner will help me just barely move it. I'm not making him work all that much. It's just having him help me just gently push out one more rep and still with good quality form. I'm not freaking struggling under the bar using every muscle possible to get it up there and breaking my workout partner's back to get it up. It's just, instead of leaving that one rep in the tank, it's it's doing that rep and maybe needing a tiny bit of help to get through the sticking point sure. and being able to finish it off on my own there. So uh, I, I, I tend to be picky with how I go about that. I think those kind of reps are very useful when they're strategically put in your plan. Definitely not yeah. something I see guys doing that on every single set, every single set they're training to failure, and every single set their workout partner is spotting them with great effort. <laughs> Most two workouts. Yes, yeah, exactly. Yeah. 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 So. yeah. I think if I put an RP, um, I, I, I toyed with, with client programming for a while, but I found I kept putting the same numbers in all the time. Yeah. You know, so it's just like typically like you don't want to take sets to bitter, utter failure unless it's indicated like on a specific time. Um, and obviously you don't want to mail it in either unless that's indicated for a specific time. So I, I just found it's just, it, it, for me, it just for, for, from a practical standpoint, I just, you know, you go to like a, a positive failure on most sets and maybe yeah. on periodically you hold back a little bit less 
and maybe some weeks you go a little bit more for one or two sets, yeah. you know, per workout. Um, so I just call it programming. I just do that. Yeah. I just call it a, yeah. it, it's proven pretty useful on this program for me too, just because I, it, my, my split at the moment is I do lower upper uh, on the first two days of the week. So it's a lower session and upper session, take a day's rest. And I do legs, push and pull um, for three days and then take a final day's rest. So it's a five day program. So I'm getting hitting the whole body twice. The latter half of the week, the push pull at the end, I, I'm, I'm trying to just moderate the intensity of that workout a little bit. It's similar rep ranges, but again, I want to be a couple of reps. I'm trying to be a couple of reps shy at least from from failure whereas earlier in the week the the, the upper lower split I'm, I'm i'm all in on those that that's like my heavier side of the week for one of a better term my more intense See, i would do the opposite i would do the opposite <laughs> <laughs> why, why, why do you do the opposite because your your hypertrophy workout that yeah. you should have that room <laughs> the lighter load and you should be able to yeah it's safe to push right, the total limit there than it is in that upper lower. Oh, that's right. The intensity is pretty much the same. It's not, not, I'm not, I'm, I'm trying not to go under six on anything at the moment. It just, I'm too beat up right now to be yeah. working. I did a whole month of threes and it nearly killed me. Um, so, you know, I've been in the six, six is as low as we're going right now. Um, and even later in the week, it's, it's ten, tens and twelves. Um, but yeah, I, I have, I have been trying to, save a little later in the week just so i'm not so beat up going into the heavier the more intense work yeah yeah it's funny i i, I would do the exact opposite i would treat those first two days like i'll go heavier but there'd be reps in the hole like yeah. really good form yep like say if i'm doing five reps i'd use a weight that i could probably get seven with you yep know, lots you know always reps in the hole at the end of the week yeah fuck it it's, that's what i that's <laughs> yeah what like, that's what, where I'm that's saying, you cable. probably had more isolation exercise in there yeah, that's easy, easier time, to man. push that's fucking cable time what's this cable time it's like <laughs> <laughs> my rpe is like, like it's off the charts man it's, uh, it's uh, awesome <laughs> it, it, but it is it is uh, different like think, thinking of rpe Stop. and <laughs> I was playing um, 80s, I was playing like, just hip hop this morning during my workout. That's right, man. <laughs> like that workout that I dialed back this week, I it's easy to say oh, my RP would be lower because I, I, I went lighter in weight, but I was a lot more focused with the movement because I went lighter, I was feeling more contraction. It, it was more intense in my mind because the focus was a hell of yeah. a lot greater. So I still gave that workout my very best effort even though the weight was a little bit lighter. So my R RPE is always friggin' up there. It's just how I'm gauging that effort is going to be a yep. little bit yep. different. Interesting. Yeah. <laughs> oh, man. Boys, this is a hell of a conversation. We covered some ground. We covered some ground. We did indeed. We did indeed. Right. Outstanding. Well, I, right. I would say that's a, that's a wrap. Right. In closing, uh, <laughs> Well, this is freaking awesome. Um, all right. In closing, I'd say go check Ooh. our sites, metabolicmaster.com, briancron.com, visceral, sh visceral shift.com. No, it's, it's a mouthful. We can call it Brian Cron, can we? Yeah. I'm not even going to spell that right now. <laughs> <laughs> I think we're at my office. I wish I had a cable station, man. I'd be hitting some right back. <laughs> <laughs> oh, like over the top, still on? Like just doing yeah. like. <laughs> I should do some curls. <laughs> Outstanding. Awesome. Love it. All right, All right guys. Bye, boys. Awesome. We'll catch right. everyone next time. See you later. Ooh.